I would call to order the Village of Westmont Planning and Zoning Commission meeting for Wednesday, August 12, 2009. May we have a roll call, please? Commissioner Thomas? Yes. Commissioner Phil? I am back. Commissioner Anton? Here. Commissioner Van Buren is here. Commissioner Fleet? Here. And Chairman Richard? Here. We have a quorum. Would you please all rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, and for liberty and justice for all. While I have you standing, please, you need to be sworn in if you're going to give any testimony either for or against. Mr. I, Chairman, there's a gentleman, I think, who is also, and he's standing in the hall. I don't know if you want to get him in here. Uh, he's a petitioner. I'll, ca I'll oh. catch him. I'll okay. catch him. I swear that any testimony I give this evening, evening will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God. I do. Okay. I would also ask that you silence any and all electronic pagers, cell phones. First item of business tonight will be approval of the minutes of our July 8th meeting. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. That is a motion by Commissioner Pill, seconded by Commissioner Anton. Do we have a question on the motion? Roll call, please. Commissioner Pill. Present. Commissioner Anton. Present. Commissioner Van Buren votes yes. Commissioner Fleet. Yes. Commissioner Thomas. Yes. And Chairman Richard. Yes. All right, before we go to do business, I would like to uh, personally welcome uh, Mr. Pill, Commissioner Pill, back after his illness. It's wonderful to see you and great to have you here. I'd just like to say thanks for all the kind wishes, the prayers, the texts, the emails, and the cards and letters and stuff. It was really a, a source of inspiration. Thank you very much. Look forward to being here for almost as long as my illustrious colleagues. <laughs> 200 years. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> okay, first item of business, planning and zoning item 090. Oh, um, if anybody is here for item three, the slot car amusement establishment for South Cass Avenue that has been withdrawn. Okay, first item of business will be planning and zoning item 09016. Noel Figueroa and Renee Sturgeon regarding the property located at 22 South Cass for the following. A, special use permit request to operate an office in the B1 limited business district. Chairman Richard, it appears that our petitioner may be running late. Um, his potential landlord, Renee Sturgeon, is here and I think is trying to reach him out in the hallway. Um, I understand that he is supposed to be in attendance this evening. Perhaps we could hear the second petition, okay. if that is your pleasure. Uh, the people in the audience, would you be Tom and Lisa Mackey? Okay, let's go to item two then. We'll defer item one. Item two, planning and zoning item 09017. Tom and Lisa Mackey regarding the property located at 32 North Linden for the following. A, zoning code variance request to permit lot coverage greater than the 40% maximum allowed in the R3 single family detached residence district for the purpose of installing a deck. Current lot coverage is 40% and approximately 43% is proposed. I will presume then that staff has uh, made you aware that for a variance, a hardship has to be established. So if you could please make us aware of that, then the sure. floor is yours. Um, two items really as to why we're here for the variance. Um, first off, the, the grading of the property that through engineering, there's quite a heavy slope in the backyard. We go from in between, if you look at the, 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 the uh, plan for the landscaping, the area in between the garage and the house and then down to the north side of the property is almost a three foot drop. Um, we understand it has to be that way for proper drainage, but at the same time, not going to be terribly easy to use the really the outdoor space, um, set up a nice patio chair and hang out and enjoy our lot. Um, secondly, the other reason we're here is because originally we were planning on doing a patio in permeable pavers. We came to find out that Westmont does not recognize permeable pavers as permeable. So unfortunately, this is our plan B. So we just want a nice space outdoors to enjoy our new home. It's a brand new house that we're hopefully going to be in in a couple of weeks. So 
Okay, we uh, before we go to the commissioners, I do have one question, and Shannon, I brought this up before when of the plan first comes in and the mathematics are done. Mm -hmm. That are all parties made aware that the lot coverage is such that is how you want to build the home. You may only have a four by four foot patio without a, a variance. Um, were you made anything aware of this? No, we were. No. We were not. We were under the assumption that the actual house could be no larger than forty percent, but it really wasn't explained to us that that included all the driveways, patios, um, sidewalks, and those kind of things. When were your building permits originally? Oh, my. November was when they were finally approved. When we were actually, yeah. Okay. I, I would um, suggest that uh, Roken Associates, the engineer firm that you guys worked with, um, may have been aware that it was close and as they were acting um, on your behalf, they had prepared this impervious area exhibit, which was dated October 7th of last year. So even at that time, it appeared that um, the, the people that you had hired were looking closely at the potential for a lot coverage issue. Um, I can't speak as far as what our staff may have conveyed to you, but um, you know, trust that that's... Um, well, and Mr. Chairman, too, um, several months ago, uh, Economic Development Department staff developed a special handout to give to anybody who applies for a permit. I, that's why I was curious about the timing on the issuance of their permit. I don't know if that was immediately before we developed that handout or I can report back to the commission at the next meeting with an answer to that question. But we do, anybody that applies for a single family home, uh, new construction or addition permit now gets a handout and must sign a letter that says, I understand that there's a 40% lot coverage and it's my responsibility to adhere to that. So it is possible that this building permit was issued perhaps slightly before we developed that new form, and I'll find out the date that we put that into practice. Does this handout also stipulate that patios would be considered as part of this 40% then? Yes. All right. Again, I think unfortunately we went under the assumption that permeable pavers would not be considered impermeable. So whether or not that information may or may not have been conveyed, we went under a false assumption, obviously. So again. And when when we were working with our builder, it really wasn't brought to our attention, them saying, oh, well, you know, you need to consider for patios and whatever, so. Unfortunately, the builder could care less, to be quite <laughs> frank with you. He He'll give you as much house there. as you want and let you straighten out any messes. Right. Okay, we'll start with uh, Commissioner Thomas, if you will, please. Uh, when I first read what the variance was, was for, uh, the first thing I think of here we here we go again, you know, uh, about last minute percentages of um, watt coverage and that we've, we've addressed this, and I have more of a problem with new construction because basically you're starting with a clean slate, a clean canvas, and your builder, architect, not necessarily you, although you're the one that gets to stand here and uh, clean up the mess, um, should know, should know what, what the laws are, what, the, what variances would be needed in that. And since, it, and since um, we have, a, this has come before us several times with new construction, henceforth the uh, handout from, from staff to, to stop it, you know. I, I would understand more with older house because a lot of times my, my view of this commission is to help the resident stay in their house, improve their house, improve the village. Well, we have, we've been residents of, of Westmont for almost 12 years now. We lived on Adams Street and sold our house in a week, unbelievably. So we are currently homeless, actually, until the new <laughs> one is built. Uh, so we, we wanted to stay in Westmont. We wanted to build in Westmont. Um, as far as I know, building this deck wouldn't change any of the engineering as far as drainage and such, because basically the deck would be built upon the existing grading, you know, the way it should be graded. It would just give us a level space to use 
while still allowing the water to come through and us absorbing it. And you can sit a chair down without it <laughs> yeah. falling, falling yeah. down the hill. All right, thank you. That's all I have. Okay, Commissioner Pill. <clears throat> No, no real questions. I just wanted to compliment you on the design of the house. Uh, it's interesting. I mean, those kind of things are very personal in taste. And when I drove over to the house, uh, it was just like uh, we, we must have very similar tastes. I thought it was one of the prettiest houses I've seen anywhere. Thank you. And I just loved everything about it. She and uh, I'm hoping you'll include me on the uh, party list when you move in. <laughs> if we we'll get see our what dad. happens at the end of this meeting. <laughs> oh, I can't. Well, <laughs> can't tie that together. But <laughs> okay. I do. I, I, I can see exactly why you would need it. I was around the backside, and uh, you could see the slope pretty well. And I mean, I think there should still be ample drainage through a deck. That's why you have a deck. So it's, it's, it's basically going to create the same thing. We're just sort of covering it with, if you want to use the ordinance, a 50% cover, if you will. And uh, I don't think it's going to cause any groundwater problems for any of your neighbors in the alley. That certainly would be a consideration for me sitting here at planning and zoning. But I think it will complement it. And it's, it's, I think it's a little unusual to have a house that beautiful and not have a deck or patio or something like that. Um, I, I do agree with Commissioner Thomas that... Uh, this is something that the architect should have paid much more attention to. And uh, I'm glad to hear that uh, um, Fred has got the, uh, the checklist going because I think the commission may take a stronger view of this in the future once they're signed documents saying, well, this is what's said. It's not really a case of hearsay or I didn't understand this. Now you're signing away and saying, I do understand this because, quite frankly, you're not the first person to stand at this podium. Thank you and good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Anton. I happen to be one of those dirty builders. Um, <laughs> on, your, uh, on your plot plan, it shows right on here the impervious area and your total area and square footage and what you have to go by. Uh, three years ago, I built my house, and I had to go by that from my deck in the back. I could only go so big on it because I was already eaten up. I'm six feet on each side, and I ate up a lot of area, so I had to cut mine down a lot. But I did, because my backyard is open, and it's a different situation. I did walk back there and see the, how it, dra it drops off there. And I don't have a problem with this because of the, the situation, because of what you have between there. I mean, you, you can't have a staircase going down and a staircase going up. It's kind of stupid. So I get it, but it is something that I think the board is going to take a hard line on. So anybody else watching this, it's been coming up every couple of years here. Someone will come and build a too big a house, and then at the end they're like, um, boo-hoo, we don't have enough room for a deck for this. And it's just not going to go their way if it's a wide-open yard, I think, like mine. I couldn't go out there and say, guys, I want you know, a 10,000 square foot deck. It's not going to go. But in your situation, I think it, it works because just the way the lot is. I mean, yeah. it just makes sense to, to do that that way. So, And like, like um, my fellow commissioner said, it's not going to affect it that much, and the water's going to run off either side. It's still going to go the same way it's got to go, the way everything drains off to the north there. So nice-looking house. Thank not you. exactly my style, but I, I like it. <laughs> so good luck with that. Thank, Thank you. you. Commissioner Van Buren. Yeah, it's knowing that um, you are probably going to have some type of a deck or patio um, did you at any time ask your builder and architect to include that in your original plans uh, no because we they the builder that we have does not really do much in the way of landscaping we have to go with an outside contractor for that okay. so we really didn't deal with our builder specifically for that and again to reiterate we thought we'd be able to go with impermeable pavers or permeable pavers I'm sorry and we wouldn't have any coverage issues whatsoever. And I guess my question to the commission... Well, then you'd have the problem, though, of, of, of you can't build a, per, well, a patio-like on an on a incline. You could, but, I mean, it, it wouldn't would be, real, make a lot of sense. Right. So that still would not have been a viable option without diverting your, your uh, um, flow. flow. Right. Uh, well, again, I, I'm totally in agreement. I, I believe, too, you have a beautiful place in... We wouldn't want to deprive you of having the greatest benefit of it, but we have to uh, we have to try and adhere to uh, code. It's there for good reasons, and um, in this instance, I would I would also go along with my fellow commissioners in saying that we let it pass. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Fleet. Well, again, I would echo um, what my fellow commissioners have said before here, and. Um, and I'm glad that we have something in place where um, someone signs and takes responsibility for this because we have seen um, a large number of these 
by comparison of um, what we should be seeing. And um, that's all I have to say. Again, uh, I'm going to reiterate uh, my fellow uh, commissioners' uh, concerns about the handouts being taken care of where when we get close to lot coverage that the homeowner is aware of this. Uh, to be quite frank with you, though, if you had come in earlier before your garage was built, uh, if you would have built your garage closer to the alley, we would not be having this travel. You're, you're set back right. approximately 21, 22 feet from the alley. We wanted to be able to park a car behind the garage if necessary. And not have to pull directly out of the garage right into the alley, considering we're right next to the businesses. Yeah, I can understand that. All right. Um, I also have no further questions. Since we are talking about a special uh, zoning code variance request, we need a readings of findings of fact. May we have that, please? Criteria number one, the property in question cannot yield a reasonable return if permitted to be used only under the conditions allowed by the regulations in the district in which it is located. This new construction home is proposed to have a lot coverage of 40% without any improvements for outdoor living. Applicant proposes to install a deck which will increase the lot coverage by approximately 267.7 square feet or 3% over what is allowed. The property cannot yield a reasonable return without the addition of some reasonable outdoor living space in the form of a deck or patio, particularly given the nature and price point of this house. Allowing this variance for the proposed deck will enable applicant to more fully utilize their backyard and will add economic value to the property. If you agree with these findings, please raise your hand. We are unanimous in agreement. Criteria number two, the plight of the owner is due to unique circumstances. The applicant was initially unaware that a proposed patio of permeable brick pavers counted towards the lot coverage requirement, and therefore applicant has redesigned this outdoor living area to propose a reasonably sized deck which is only considered 50% permeable. Due to the uneven nature of the grading in the rear of the property, it is difficult for the applicant to enjoy their backyard safely and comfortably without this proposed deck. If you agree with these findings, please raise your hand. We are unanimous in agreement. Criteria number three, the variation, if granted, will not alter the essential character of the locality. The proposed deck is reasonable in size and will not adversely impact green space or stormwater runoff to the detriment of surrounding property owners. This proposed deck is consistent with other outdoor improvements in the immediate area, and granting this variance will not alter the essential character of the locality. If you agree with this, please raise your hand. We are unanimous in agreement. The findings of fact for a variance are hereby adopted. I would entertain a motion to recommend approval to the Board of Trustees, Planning and Zoning Item 09017, Zoning Code Variance Request to permit lot coverage greater than the 40% maximum allowed in the R3 Single Family Detached Residence District for the purpose of installing a deck. Current lot coverage is 40% and approximately 43% is proposed. So moved. Second. That's motion by Commissioner Pill, seconded by Commissioner Anton. Do we have a question on the motion? May we have a roll call, please? Commissioner Anton? Yes. Commissioner Van Buren votes yes. Commissioner Fleet? Yes. Commissioner Thomas? Yes. Commissioner Pill? Yes. And Chairman Richard? Yes. All right, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Mackey, you have our uh, recommendation. It'll go to the Board of Trustees, and staff can tell you when you'll have a hearing at the Committee of the Whole on a Thursday evening. Thank, Thank you very, you very much, very much. And I also would like to congratulate the beautiful home. Thank, Thank you. you. Planning and zoning item 09016, Noel Figueroa and Renee Sturgeon regarding the property located at 22 South Cass for the following. A, special use permit request to operate an office in the B1 limited business district. Now, gentlemen, you weren't here when I swore everybody in, so I need to swear you in before you give any testimony. So I swear that any testimony I give this evening shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God. So help me God. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Please, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you. Um, my name is Noe, Noe Figueroa, as you, as you can see. I want to apologize for being a little late, last time traffic, but I also want to... Um, just uh, let you know that I just got surgery on my left eye, so I'm going to read my uh, my letter in order to present what I what I'm uh, applying for. My name is Noel Figueroa, and I am from Guatemala, living in the United States since um, 1979, uh, and I'm a citizen of the United States now. 
Um, I also have worked basically in nonprofit organizations focusing always on the necessity of the community. I graduated as a BIA, which means uh, from the Board of uh, Immigration Appeals, from, uh, as a counselor from the DePaul University. I was, um, I, I'm sorry, I became an, an accredited counselor from the Department of Homeland Security. And I didn't, I didn't write the, the date here, but that was uh, July 23rd. Uh, 2004, uh, but because of my health, I couldn't. I could not continue working. Is um, sorry, I can't see. I couldn't uh, working as uh, many hours as I used to. Now I have noticed. Um, I have um, noticed that I, you know, I can work as a volunteer on some of uh, of the programs all over the place. I do have uh, this wish to open this place, you know, in order to continue my work and uh, at the same time help other people, of course. Uh, I am a bilingual person, not a republic. I also teach, you know, I'm a uh, cook instructor and uh, I'm a professional translator. And uh, also I do, I'm, I'm an uh, instructor in music and, uh, and of course and I'm an immigration counselor. Um, I graduated with uh, a degree from Chicago DePaul University, as I mentioned before, from the Faculty of Law as a counselor and uh, to represent as a BIA, uh, and that uh, I have working as a volunteer in nonprofit organizations, which show to me that my purpose in life is to serve. Uh, the business that I'm trying to open will offer services to the community in income tax, you know, uh, translations, helping uh, to fill all types of, uh, of forms. And that's what I present in this evening. Um, I don't know what else to say. Would you care to address the board, sir? Yes. Uh, my name is Renee Sturgeon, and I'm the landlord on this property. And uh, we're concerned about uh, the immigration house. Uh, I figure that since I have people that have immigrated from Mexico and from Latin America that around this area they need a, a place so they could get some counseling and he could guide them as to what laws they could uh, proceed. And, and since uh, he, he speaks both languages, he's a good translator. I could vouch for him because we attend to uh, the, we we attend the same church community over in Westman, uh, I'm Oakbrook. I'm sorry, but uh, like I said, he's a professional translator, and he worked with uh, as a counselor, as an immigration counselor. And I think the community uh, needs a person like him. Thank you. Okay. Uh, staff, any comments? Um, just generally, the petitioner's wanting to open uh, the small office. It's about 430 square feet. Um, his, the parking requirement would be one and a half spaces. Technically, we can waive that um, because less than three are required, and there's a provision of the code there. But there is um, ample parking behind the building. Um, additionally, there's on-street parking and the public lots nearby. Um, as far as the use, um, it was mentioned that um, Mr. Figaro um, is a, a teaching chef. Um, obviously, that would be something that is not, if he hosted anything like that, I just want to clarify to you that that wouldn't be something that could be done here because it would be considered like a for-profit school. Um, but it, as far as the office use, um, the, the landlord's attempting to lease a space that um, has been vacant for a little while, and um, unless there are any specific questions, that's all I have to say. Okay, council also has a question, if it will. Um, are, can you explain what the hours of operation are expected to hours, be? Uh, we plan it to open at 9 o'clock in the morning till 5. And I assume there's no unique lighting um, that's being proposed that will have any impact on surrounding property owners? I don't think so. No. No. Okay, let's start with Commissioner Fleet. Um, given the, the picture that was shown in, uh, how would you advertise? How would you do your signage here? 
on your building. What, uh, what are your plans for that? Just just some signs on the, on the windows. Uh, some signs on the window, and I we propose to put a sign like on the other uh, building, or the, the I, I think there there's a picture on there, and they do have a sign, so we expect to put a sign up there too. Kind of okay. Work. Yeah, the signs on, on at least on the building on the left or yeah. to the south of you is 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 painted on, and you would look at doing. We're going to do it a more professional. It's not his yeah. building. Just as a point of clarification to Commissioner Fleet, if the, if you do um, have a sign on the facade of the building, a permit will be required. If you did lettering within the window, as long as it's not over, I think it's sixty percent of the area you do not need a permit. Uh, the, the thing is that uh, previous to that uh, uh, first, I mean, it had been empty for a while, but it used to be an insurance before, and he had permission. So we're just basically there. All I have to do is just bring the sign in and put it, put a sign that's a regulation. It will need regulations. For the reinstallation, we still require you to come into the Economic Development Department and apply for a sign permit. Even if you're using a, an old um, sign form, you just stop in and we can walk we'll you through that. So we get a permit. We'll do it. Okay, no further questions for me. Okay, Commissioner Van Buren. Well, as you know, the reason you're here is this B1 use is normally for businesses that generate sales tax revenue. Services normally don't, so that's basically why you're here. Mm -hmm. okay. And uh, I know that since this was an insurance office before, it wasn't generating, it was a non conforming um, use at that time. And you don't adopt that, that's why you're here also. You have to start over. Um, I, I guess, in my estimation and realizing the number of vacancies in the area that it would be better to be occupied by a non-revenue producing than to be vacant. So that's my take on okay. it. Thank Commission, you. Commissioner Ranton? No questions. Commissioner Pill? I support the same thought process as Commissioner Van Buren. Um, one question I do have, <clears throat> in looking at locations, what made you think that Westmont was the ideal location well, for immigration. Are there immigration problems here in Westmont? Are there bilingual immigration problems here in Westmont? I'm curious why you would choose to locate here as opposed to the entire, um, you know, Chicagoland metropolitan area. Well, uh, I began attending this church in Oakbrook. Oakbrook, right? Yeah, Oakbrook Community Church. <laughs> yeah, Oakbrook Community, Community Church. Church. And um, basically, I just uh, started helping, as, as I mentioned, you know, a nonprofit organization. So my heart has been, you know, on, on this organization for a long time. I began attending this church about a couple of years ago, and I gave uh, some, you know, a few conferences uh, asking, you know, offering questions, I mean, uh, answers to very, very hard questions uh, about immigration issues. Uh, also, I need to mention that at BIA, that doesn't mean that I'm going to be uh, officially uh, and a counselor, you know, because that's something that I cannot do legally. Uh, I, I need to I need to finish some other stuff from school in order to to be a, a legal counselor in that office. But what I'm uh, what it really inspired me was the, the necessity of a lot of fraud around and uh, on that area. Uh, I I'm familiar with the Spanish community. I own Taco Express. I know that there's a lot of Spanish-speaking uh, people in the area, especially the ponds and, and the, the, the surrounding community. So I've been there for about 17 years, and uh, we could use or some counseling as, <coughs> as uh, he's, uh, well, he's equipped to, to help the, those people in need. Your question was, asked, you know, about uh, why, and the reason is because uh, my brother-in-law you know, began being a pastor of that church, and uh, being being a member now of the church, I see a lot of, a lot of need, uh, and uh, I don't work as many hours as I used to, so I would like also to, you know, they, a lot of people are going to help, like uh, Renee here. And with a you know like a low low rent like seven hundred and fifty dollars a month is not that much if we can uh, do something for the community 
um, because it, basically the community co uh, contributes, you know, to this uh, uh, to these facts or to these necessities, um, and also because um, I need to work. <laughs> So you have a schedule of fees and you charge for your services then? Right, right. But uh, also I need to mention that when people cannot pay, you know, those fees, we need to, we, we just have to go down and, you know, go in agreement. And uh, we really try to suit whatever need uh, a client have or has. Your office does not become an area where, for instance, people would congregate for the whole day looking no. for work no. and things like that. Would no. that no. Uh, it's, like I said, it's, it's not legally, you know, for my part to become a, uh, an official officer from the Department of Homeland Security, uh, which I, I, I was a representative, but I had to leave the agency because of my health. So now it's just only to help people, basically, to, you know, to make them understand uh, the, the, the law, because I, I, I do have the, the knowledge. Uh, it's just that I couldn't finish it. That's Final it. question. What does BIA stand for? BIA means uh, Board of Immigration Appeals. That's the department in Washington. And I still in contact, you know. Okay. Thank you very much for no further questions. Commissioner Thomas? Um, like uh, several other commissioners have said, I don't want to see empty offices right on our main street and if by although that's not what we would ideally want want there um, if you're going to have something there that will actually help residents of the community um, help fight fraud which which um, people coming into the country deal with fraud from the very beginning, from the time they leave their country to the time while they, during their trip here, and are taken advantage of from start to finish. And once they get there, that does, here, that doesn't necessarily stop. And people are always looking to take advantage. And if you be able to guide them into a way where they're legal, legal right. immigrants, then they don't have to be looking over their shoulders and they can live their lives and if you can help them fill a storefront also it's a win-win as far as i'm concerned mm -hmm. that's all i have thank you thanks my main trouble with this is the non-revenue producing portion of the business which if i'm not mistaken we just okayed a uh, or recommended for okay an income tax office up in Richmond Station not too long ago, immediately north of there. I would regret that the store is empty, but this is our central business district, and ostensibly we, we put a lot of thought into the zoning of this so that it would be a revenue producer for the village. And to be quite frank with you, I don't see you producing any revenue for us whatsoever. And uh, we have had as what I think is more than enough income tax service businesses. So that uh, I myself, I personally, I have a problem with this request. That's all I'll say. And since we have a special use, any further staff with any comments? Uh, excuse me, sir, before you vote. Yes. I have had that empty store for over two years and uh, I noticed that some of the other stores' uh, offices next to me, that big building next to me, had been empty, and they, they did uh, have an office there. And I'm not saying that I should or not, but I think this would serve the community gratefully. We need somebody to, to guide these people, you know, immigrants, to know the law. And he's the one person that could help. And uh, if you grant us this, I will really appreciate it. And we are working <coughs> with, the with the church. Thank you. You're welcome. Any further comments? 
Since we have a special use permit, we need a reading of findings of fact, if we may have that, please. Criteria number one, the proposed use at this location will not have any adverse effects above and beyond those inherently associated with such a special use, irrespective of its location within the zoning district. This property is uniquely suited for a ground floor office use as the principal building was primarily designed for such use and has been previously used for business office purposes. There is no second floor or basement space on the property in which to locate this proposed office use. Given the economic conditions, there is uncertainty whether a sales tax generating retail or restaurant use would occupy this space. The proposed office use will have no unique parking, lighting, hours of operation, or other adverse impact on the surrounding properties or the public. If you agree with these findings, please raise your hand. Okay, all commissioners agree except the chairman. The chairman does not agree. The findings of fact for a special use are hereby adopted. I would entertain a motion to recommend approval to the Board of Trustees under Planning and Zoning Item 09016, a special use permit request to operate an office in the B1 Limited Business District. So move. Second. Motion by Commissioner Thomas, seconded by Commissioner Anton. Do we have a question on the motion? May we have roll call, please? Commissioner Van Buren votes yes. Commissioner Fleet? Yes. Commissioner Thomas? Yes. Commissioner Pill? Yes. Commissioner Anton? Yes. And Chairman Richard? No. All right, sir, you have our recommendation for a special use permit, and staff can tell you when you will meet with the Committee of the Whole on a Thursday evening in the future. And... Uh, Present your case to the Board of Trustees. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, sir. Any commissioners with any news or concerns? Staff? Just a couple of quick items of business. Um, in your packets for this evening, um, we passed out a copy of a planning leadership conference that CMAP is hosting. The date of that conference is uh, Saturday, August 22nd, and it'll provide some information on best practices and planning, some current um, law updates, and it's a great inexpensive way to get some training um, that may be beneficial. So the Economic Development Department um, can, can make arrangements for you to attend and, and pay for your attendance if anyone is interested. So um, there is an RSVP deadline. It's August 18th. So if any of you would like to attend, um, please let me know within the next couple of days and we'll make arrangements for you to be there. Would that also include parking, uh, Shannon, um, which can cost you know, a the, few the meeting, dollars? Yeah, the meeting takes place at, I hesitate to say Willis Tower, but I guess I have to now, the former Sears Tower, um, and I don't believe parking will be included. Oh, right. I spent um, all morning there this morning at a meeting. <clears throat> the least expensive parking is uh, on Clinton across from Union Station. <clears throat> Minimum eighteen dollars. Okay. Take the train. Yeah. It's it's um if you take the metro too that you know it's a block. Yeah, it's away. very close. So it's very you take conveniently the located. Saturday schedules are. You don't. Of, that's true. That's true. Yeah. But if you don't want to deal with the driving in, that's another alternative, and it's um, good for the environment to take those trains in. So, um, and then secondly, the American Planning Association's Upper Midwest Conference uh, is taking place next month. Um, I think it's the third week of September, and this year they're everything's kind of based on the centennial um, for Daniel Burnham's plan for Chicago. Um, we've been asked if we can help coordinate a, a walking tour. Actually, this is a unique conference because um, all of the sessions are mobile-based, so at the the planners will be going out into the field in droves and um, going from community to community to see how things are done in, in the Chicagoland area. Uh, a couple of months ago, we were contacted by both the RTA and the URS Corporation. Um, they were interested in featuring Westmont um, in a, a mobile tour about transit-oriented development. So on Friday, September 25th, um, I believe at starting at 4 o'clock, um, there will be a mobile tour comparing um, a couple of uh, Western communities, ourselves and LaGrange will be covered on a, a tour. So um, I wanted to pass that along, and um, if anyone might want to attend that as well, um, give me a little bit of notice. I think we could probably coordinate with that with their staff. What was that date again, Shannon? Uh, Friday, September 25th, I believe. And, and we have them, uh, Mr. Chairman, for a grand total of 42 minutes yeah. from the time they jump <laughs> off the train. 
train and we push them back on. So we're going to be walking very rapidly to, to get them through the, the mobile tour of the downtown. So this would be during the day, the evening That's, hours? Or uh, I think it was like 4 in the afternoon. Yeah, it's, it's 4. I think they'll be in Westmont from 4 to 4.42. I think that's, <laughs> yeah, and then they get back on the train and go back into town. And if we wish to participate, we just get in touch with the Yeah, let again, me know, presume. and then I can give a head count to the folks that are actually facilitating okay. the tour. There, there won't be any coffee breaks or anything along the way because... It's Not enough be, time. Yeah. Always <laughs> out. And I have nothing further this evening. Nothing further, then I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion by Commissioner Anton, seconded by Commissioner uh, Fleet. May we have uh, all in favor vote by saying aye. 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 We are adjourned.